can we go back to the start of your journey as a, as a curator and go down memory lane? I trained as a journalist and I've always been involved in the art world, be it teaching, painting or making a little bit of sculpture. And that carried on till I started at the university when I realized I don't have time for my own endeavors. I've been a very curious child and I'm still a curious adult. It's quite fun to know things ahead of other people. <laughs> I'm also a ferocious reader and a lifelong learner who taught myself speed reading at a very young age because I wanted to get to the end of the book. On the other hand, I consider artists are like prophets. They have a tendency to predict and react to the defining ideas and beliefs of a particular social construct long before mere mortals do. And this convergence of understanding of what is happening in the crystal ball has to me in good state throughout my career. We're looking at a tremendous amount of change. So first and foremost, your move from brick and mortar physical gallery spaces to what we're doing now. I mean, I'm interviewing you via Zoom. We have platforms <laughs> like the Moving Cube. Can you speak to some of that change, specifically the role of technology and how that's impacted the, the art of curation? We are so involved in the idea that visual arts offer a sensory experience. And that holds true. There is just something so very special about becoming immersed in an artwork to get a whiff of the residue of paint and varnish or to delicately touch a piece of bronze. There is that moment of experiencing something of what the artist was trying to convey, the energy that was involved there. Just by the by, I spoke to a ceramist a while ago and said, you know, there's so much energy in this specific work. And she said, no, the energy is burnt out because it was fired at 2,000 degrees. But even though you have that, you sense the energy. We knew it was coming, but still considered digital representation of the real as the stepchild, as a secondary option. It was sort of proposed as you can walk through a gallery when you can't actually be there. Then this minute organism called COVID-19 hit our planet was such a force effectively changing the way our earthlings operated forever. But the bottom line is we found ourselves in 2020 on the cusp of a new approach to visual art. Good evening and welcome to the online opening. We weren't prepared for it. UJ Arts and Culture combined choral music and visual art and dance to create a project called The Pandemic that was hugely successful. And this was followed by Cure, where artists had to interact again with choral music and the principles of Michelangelo Pistoletto addressing the curative qualities of art. In between those two projects, we really realized that we had to build a gallery website, a hefty enterprise that we completed within a relatively short period with the support of the MTN SI Foundation. I would consider myself sort of a Luddite started throwing technical jargon around like a pro all of a sudden and we really had the idea of well I had an idea of what I wanted and other people had to do the how which I can't do obviously. So the resulting moving cube is now firmly established not only as a virtual gallery but also as a depository of knowledge a research archive a teaching and learning mechanism and I'm very proud to see the moving cube as part of my legacy this late in my career. Career. Speaking of legacy, throughout your career, you've been quite deliberate in opening up access to gallery spaces. I think with the brick and mortar space, as you described it, the white cube is, is very exclusive and very daunting for some people. We must move away from the ivory tower and stop playing that it's only the privileged few that can appreciate it or understand it. And I've tried my best and I hope I succeeded to some degree to have made the gallery more accessible on various levels. Some of the biggest lessons you've learned over the years and some of your most vital contributions. I thought a lot of that question last night. I came back to the way I was brought up and the first thing is respect the second one is trustworthiness the third is being tough but approachable regarding the respect but i attended a restoration course in florence a few years ago i was tasked to my horror with the restoring of a late 18th century hunting scene so i was happy painting along when i started noticing minute anatomical discrepancies which i duly corrected <laughs> and until i heard a cold italian voice behind me saying you're not the artist, 
you are in the service of the artwork and the artist. So that was a tough lesson for me. And it taught me a greater respect for artists and their life's work and their feelings. So my curating style has always been collaborative. So I work with the artists and give them some guidance where I can. You can only promise what you can deliver. And I think that was a very important lesson because artists can expect things, I can be demanding of things, but you can only give them what you have promised them originally. I'm known to offering my soft shoulder and a warm cup of tea when the going gets tough. And I think that has pulled both myself and artists through difficult situations. It's just to become a human again and see how we can sort out a problem. We're in a different boat, especially since we started with our lockdowns last year. But to me, it was important to give deserving artists, and especially emerging artists of various demographics, a platform in a non-commercial space. It was also of building up the standing and reputation of the gallery and making it a welcoming space to artists and patrons alike. I formed friendships over the years with lovely people. I saw people meeting each other at the gallery and eventually getting married. I saw youngsters coming in who have never been there, been gobsmacked and coming back and said, please don't tell anybody about this because I want it to be my space. <laughs> so it was very gratifying to see that it was important to expose the audiences to a wide variety of art forms and philosophical approaches and knowledgeable opening speakers who could enlighten audiences walkabouts, lectures, courses, that sort of thing. And to go down uh, memory lane a little bit more, can you speak to some of your highlights, um, be it anecdotal or if we're talking about specific exhibitions, artists, anything, what really stands out to you as you, some of your best memories over the past two decades? <laughs> We have moved from a very young democracy when I started working at the gallery up to now where we are in a totally different world and we are global role players and very aware. It's a, it's a new generation that's come up. I mean, you can imagine I'm a baby boomer and I deal with millennials all the time. So up to now, it has been a good relationship, but you can sense the, the generational differences, political, social, economical, everything has changed considerably. So for me to come to highlights i have to write a book about secrets behind the gallery door sort of thing <laughs> um, but i must say that the most enduring memories will be that of meeting with artists and have insights into those beautiful minds it's very great gratifying also to see how artists who exhibited at uj at the beginning of my career have developed and grown up into the present and to have that sort of knowledge that i played a little role in forming the new person that came out of 20 years ago one highlight was def definitely the 21 years of curating the Cube in 2019. And it gave me the opportunity re to reflect on all the magnificent artworks that came through the gallery's door. I'm very deeply appreciative and humbled by the great artists who entrusted me with their works and their vision. But it was difficult to choose 33 or 36 works, I think we had, reflective of 21 years. And I roped in Johan Meiberg as a guest curator because I wanted someone that's more, less partial. It's like having to choose which child you like the best. I wanted to build another gallery. <laughs> it was difficult for me. So it was quite surprising then to find out that I focused a lot on symbolism, on semiotics in my approach to choosing the artworks that, that I wanted to exhibit. I'm deeply grateful to, to the University of Johannesburg for entrusting me with a wonderful facility where I could live out my dreams for so many years, as I am to my colleagues at UJ Arts and Culture for their support and encouragement and understanding. And of course, I tip my hat to all the artists who participated in exhibitions at the UJ Art Gallery throughout my tenure. Without them, I wouldn't have had the pleasure of exploring art as indicator of 21 years. So I'm looking forward to the next phase of my life with bated breath. My bucket list is is full <laughs> and I have to start unpacking that pretty soon and I can only wish the next curator the best of everything in all future endeavors. 